Hi, it's Miss Becky from Miss Becky's Musical Stories, and today we're going to read Dream Something Big. The Story of the Watts Towers by Diana Hutz Aston, collages by Susan L. Roth. That is a beautiful cover. One chip of tile. Uncle Sam held it in his hand, studying it. His imagination turned like a kaleidoscope. He put it in his pocket. I'm going to do something big, I heard him say. Well, that's just one little piece of tile. I didn't know it then, but that single chip of tile was no longer trash. It was the first building block to a candy covered castle. Uncle Sam was my neighbor. His name was Simon, but we never called him that. We lived in Watts, California on 107th Street, where the aroma of tamales sizzled in the air where the trucks of the Japanese farmers rumbled to, a from, to and from vegetable markets, where music and laughter rippled from d diners and dancers at the Watts Tavern. No one really knew what to think about Uncle Sam. This man who talked to himself as he hunted through garbage heaps for things no one wanted. A rainbow of broken teapots, plates, tiles, and sparkling bottles. I collected jewels with him along the railroad tracks. Sacks and sacks and sacks of them. My favorite were the tiles with the blue flowers. The soda bottles with the giant, with the girl and the bubbles, and the green horse. For every bag of bits, he gave me a penny. Pennies bought a lot of candy. So they're searching for materials for his building out of the trash. Uncle Sam worked in a tile factory every day except Sundays and holidays, but he worked on his creation every night, every Sunday, every holiday. He took those bags of glass and smashed them. Whack, whack, whack. I watched him shove steel rods under the railroad tracks and transform them into rings. Uncle Sam was small and skinny, but his muscles were mighty. There's his muscles. Some people called him crazy, but he wasn't. He was a magician. In broken things, he saw what no one else noticed. He found hearts in the backs of old ice cream parlor chairs, flowers in faucet handles, the sun in rusty gears. People who couldn't see the hearts and flowers wondered, why build it? Why build it? I can't tell you, he said, why a man make why a man make the pants? Why a man make the shoes? Uncle Sam talked to himself while he mixed a secret recipe for mortar. This much sand, this much cement, this much water, cement, as powdery as flour, sand as finely ground as sugar, water to bind them.
He wrapped wire mesh around the poles, smoothed the cement around them, and carefully pressed a jigsaw of jewels into his batter of wet cement. Day after day, year after year, working on his something big without gloves until his fingerprints were worn away. A ship appeared, a tower rose, a cactus garden bloomed. Wow, these are all the things that he is making from the glass and the things that he's found. In his strange mix of Italian and English, there was a difficult it was difficult for us to understand. He told us about the great towers and the ship he'd seen as a child in the parades of the village of Ribaltali, towers that were six stories high. Uncle Sam worked long into the night singing to himself flitting from rung to rung like a firefly. Turn out the light, Uncle Sam. I'm working up here, Marguerite. Every day the trains passed by with tens of thousands of passengers a week, going to and from Los Angeles. The towers were, were Uncle Sam's stage, the passengers his audience. Dust from the train swirled around him, but he didn't let it bother him. He was in the spotlight. Another tower arose. Uncle Sam showed my children the triangles in the branches of the trees. There's a triangle here. Triangles, he said, were the strongest shapes, and the, he built his towers with triangles, day after day after day, year after year. I see lots of triangles, lots of shapes. He showed me and my children a beauty of broken angel, a bowling ball, a boot, the usefulness of an airplane wing, the pattern shells and rocks could make that rocks could make. Uncle Sam was like a spider weaving his web of steel and cement and lacy shadows. The third tower was his last. He wrote his initials and Nuestro Pueblo in cement, our town a village for the world. Beautiful illustrations. Not long after that, Uncle Sam suddenly put away his tools and jewels and stopped building. We were all surprised. He put on a suit, pinned his life savings inside, and gave the deed to his triangular lot with its ship and towers, fountain and gardens to a friend and walked away. We never saw Uncle Sam again. Wonder why. But I remembered him, my Uncle Sam, my neighbor for 34 years, the dreamer. So he dreamed to make these beautiful creations and he made them come true.
people no longer call Simon Rodia foolish and crazy. They call him a man of genius who built a gigantic flower of folk art, a man with a heart full of gratitude to the country that had invited him to dream without limits, the country that had given him the freedom to reach for the sky. Uncle Sam's Something Big is now a national landmark.